Today, our feature is going to be uh, how to uh, how to plan your MCAT study. We got a section on that, and also how Sketchy can be a part of your MCAT study, or even just how methods like Sketchy can be a part of your MCAT study. Because we're going to peek behind the curtain and show you how we do stuff here at Sketchy. Not like how to draw the art. That stuff is like magic. Don't even know how our artists do it, but at least the mental imagery pieces. Um, and uh, we're going to start here by just talking about myself and Jess. Uh, and you may see somebody named Sketchy Marketing here as well, <laughs> either in the uh, in the chat uh, or in the windows. Her, that is Brenna. Uh, she is another member of our Sketchy team. So hello, Brenna. Um, if you want to say hi in the chat, there, there we are. Um, <clears throat> uh, welcome uh, as well. But yeah, for the most part, uh, this session is actually going to be, I, I've been clearing my throat a lot here at the start, uh, but someone who uh, is all in on the brain science uh, is Jess. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Jess to be our primary MC, but she and I are going to be bouncing off each other for most of the session. So go ahead. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Adam. So hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. As Adam said, I'm Jess. I'm the director of our undergraduate education here at Sketchy. Uh, so that includes our MCAT program. I have a PhD in neuroscience. And for some reason, surprise, surprise, I guess my favorite um, study carb is always Smarties. Um, so I think, I guess they thought they'd make me smarter. And I think the only thing I was always confused by is why the green color is actually strawberry flavored. So if anyone can tell me, I'd like to know. I haven't been Smarties in so many years. And even when I had them, I would always just eat the whole package, like in one, one I'd eat the whole sleeve of Smarties. So I couldn't even tell the difference in flavors. <laughs> um, my name is Adam. I'm the head of education programs at Sketchy. I have been an MCAT guy for a very long time. Um, if you have used MCAT prep anytime within the last, uh, well, about eight years is when I've been making the MCAT stuff, but I've been an MCAT teacher for even longer than that. I was the first MCAT person hired by Sketchy, uh, and then Jess came aboard just a couple months later. Um, my favorite study carb, and maybe it was just one of my carbs in general, is nice, meaty raspberries. And by that, I mean, I mean like they're firm. They got some nice, like, fleshiness to them. They don't just fall apart. Um, they're just so good. If you can ever get yourself some of those, I highly recommend. They're really good stuff. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is what we're going to do today. Yeah. And I promise we'll keep, keep the intro brief, um, but we'll definitely, so we have a lot of newcomers. Um, so we we'll definitely introduce you to Sketchy, who we are, what we are, what we do. Uh, and then as Adam mentioned already, Definitely talk about some tips and strategies for your study plan, and then make sure we leave plenty of time uh, for you to answer, ask any questions, and for us to provide your answers. Um, so let's dive right in. Yeah, uh, and if you uh, if if you want to really, like I said, ask questions at any point through this, mm -hmm. or if there's any part of your MCAT study experience or whatever that you just want to share that's relevant to what we're talking about, especially when we get to the MCAT mm -hmm. study pieces, um, just go ahead and say so. We'd love to make this, you know, uh, a conversation to a degree. I'm not going to throw anyone on camera or mic. Don't worry about that. But uh, um, so it's going to go. Uh, so, yeah, especially to those of you who are either typed or were thinking the number two to the question I asked earlier in terms of were you familiar with Sketchy or not? Uh, what we are is uh, we are a visual learning company, but it's not just visuals. It's every way that your brain likes to learn things. So all the really tough stuff that you got to learn. Obviously, we're here to talk about the MCAT and there's a lot of tough stuff to learn and remember for the MCAT. But Sketchy's real base and origin was in medical school, where there's even more to learn and memorize in some very challenging subjects. Uh, and Sketchy is just part of how medical school works nowadays. Uh, so all of you, who I think ev everyone in this channel probably wants to go to medical school. And <laughs> I hope all of you are there. You're probably going to run into Sketchy then, uh, especially for courses like pharmacology, micro, path, and things like that. Um, so, you know, uh, it's very trusted by, well, exactly the kinds of people that you all are, uh, medical students and now future medical students. Uh, everyone uses it. 
it improves scores. It uh, lets you skip class because you don't have to go lecture. Uh, you pass your tests, you pass your boards. Um, and a lot of people say, well, hey, am I the kind of person sketchy is good for? Uh, and yay, well, do you like to remember stuff? Uh, do you like to never forget it? Do you like to have fun while you study? Because I said, what we do is all the things your brain really likes. It's about visuals, but it's also just about weird, unforgettable things that stick in your brain and humor and characters and art and all of that. So it's not just mnemonics, it's also stories. And what we do our best to do is take each lesson on everything we teach and make it already like the best lesson you would have ever heard. The best just lecture, just teaches everything you need in a good organized way. And it's set in a memory palace using the method of loci, which is what we're gonna explain today. So um, we do believe that even though Sketchy is a visual tool, some people identify as visual learners more than other people. Uh, it actually is something everyone should at least try because even a lot of people who don't like really hang to that visual learning moniker, they really like it around here. Uh, and we're really building for everyone. But yeah, we're going to talk about what Sketchy does and walk through what the method of loci is. And I also want to frame what we're about to talk about. This is not just like an extended pitch for what Sketchy is. We're going to explain our method because it is a studying method. This is a study scheduling session. That's what we said it was going to be. And whether you use Sketchy or not, this is a method that if you know the premises of it, you can use it with your own symbols and visuals, and you can use it for subjects outside of Sketchy. So we're going to walk through a bit step by step how it works. Uh, so yeah, Jess, what are we going to do with these arbitrary facts? Yeah, so I like to throw them up here on the screen, right? So just threw up some uh, facts from a carbohydrate classification lesson. And I'd love to kind of hear from y'all what comes to mind when you read these. Um, you know, are you thinking any visuals? Is it something from a textbook, a lecture? What sort of thing comes to mind when you see these? Yeah, just type it in the chat. Like if you were to close your eyes and you hear me say five, mem five carbon sugar, it's a pyranos. Like what shows up in your visual imagination? <clears throat> right. Yeah, that's cool. So I'm seeing shapes. Uh, one of the things that people never say to answer this question is I think about those words. <laughs> like in my imagination, I imagine the words pentagonal five carbon sugars are called furnaces. Um, ooh, uh, I, Ke Kevin is speaking stacked items. So like when we're talking about stacking like starches and celluloses together, get sort of like a visual there. Very interesting. Uh, Miata is talking about, uh, yeah, little beads. Oh, very nice. Um, and so, you know, what you're talking about is uh, like a lot of you have like references to maybe figures that you've seen in textbooks or on blackboards or, you know, that, that you've got there um, or uh, other things you have, but it's kind of a literal visualization. Um, now, the thing, I don't know about y'all, but to me, if I just think about the structures of all like, let's say the different six carbon sugars. They all look awfully similar. There's only tiny little details that are different. Uh, so the more detail you get into, the more you kind of wish there was something more distinct and memorable you could hang yourself on. And that's what the method of loci and the sketchy method ends up being about. Uh, so Jess, you know, let's uh, let's start introducing some more color into the way we can imagine these types of facts. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, here at Sketchy, we don't want those boring arbitrary facts. You know, we take them and, and turn them into engaging visual stories that you can't forget, right? So if we just look at the first two, the Pyrenos and Pyrenos. So, you know, what comes to mind for us when we say Pyrenos is pyro, like fire. And we're talking about six carbon sugars. So why not turn a hexagonal loop, put it on fire? You know, we always love fire too. Um, so you're not going to forget this jester sort of juggling um, this hoop, flaming hoop, right? And then if we think about the five carbon sugar, the furidose, so the first thing that comes to mind, the fear part, so the furry nose bear, 
So, you know, why not Very draw a little guy <laughs> Pentagon shaped head? Um, so I know I'm not going to forget these two characters. Um, so then if we sort of keep going, combine it with with the other facts we have going on. No, I have to stop. Oh, I have to can't. stop Zoom's annotations. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Zoom annotations. Like, I stop. mean, you can circle the bear all day long, you know. It's, Stop so zooming. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, now moving on to, to sort of eating and digesting. Um, you know, here we're talking about digestible starches in the shape of alpha glucose. So you'll see in this little bowl, we have some alpha shaped noodles. Uh, so that just reminds you of sort of the starchy, digestible, like I said, alpha shaped. So we like to do you know, incorporate symbols like that. And then the same with the beta shaped leaves that they're eating the celery. So cellulose being a little more indigestible uh, and made of beta glucose. So you'll see that the, the leaves are, are beta shaped. Uh, so that's just another way we can play around with these alpha and beta symbols. Yeah, and I, I don't know, again, I, the, a lot of this, a lot of what we do here, you know, it's based on how we learn and based on, you know, the way we remember things. And uh, again, and I know I'm not alone here, but like, what else do you have to remember that starch is alpha and cellulose is beta? Like, th there really isn't. It's just a thing. It's like, well, you, you might remember it or you might accidentally switch the two. But if you have this very specific image of these alpha shaped noodles or the beta shaped celery, it, it, it just sticks. I certainly have never mixed it up since, since, since we made this sketch. Uh, and it, uh, it just gives you another way to solidify every one of these. It means when you need to review something for an exam, you don't have to reread the whole thing. You don't have to go back to it quite as in depth. Uh, and yeah, just what, what happens when we put all those together? Right. So those were just four symbols. So this particular lesson has 20. Um, so, you know, you'll notice a lot more going on. You'll notice the stories taking place in a candy castle. Um, and this happens to be in our candy kingdom, uh, because what we've done for our entire biochemistry um, course is sketchy land. And then we take each unit. So our unit in carbohydrates uh, takes place in this candy kingdom. So you'll see sort of at the bottom there, the candy castle, number one. Uh, so this is the particular lesson we're talking about uh, for a carbohydrate classification uh, lesson. Anyone want to take a stab in the chat at guessing what that teacup ride is in the upper left hand corner, in the upper right hand corner? I don't know how many guesses you're going to need, but we've got our carbohydrates lesson and we've got a teacup ride somewhere. What mm -hmm. lesson is that probably? <laughs> <laughs> they can't cheat it's not on the left hand side so. <laughs> yep <laughs> well, all right it took exactly one guess in the chat yep that's citric acid cycle um what's uh what's funny about that one <laughs> is we uh we have we made a biochemistry course and like one of our co-founders he had he hadn't been around for the time that we made the biochemistry course and we were like well we have a lesson for the citric acid cycle um, and he was like, yeah, I don't, I mean, what, what did we do? Do we do that? It was like a teacup ride. Like he wasn't here when we made it, but like he knew that's what we would have done. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's sometimes it just clicks. Uh, and we've done this with every one of our subjects. It's really great for biochemistry, but we found that even the subjects that you might not usually think are super memorization based. Now for the ones that are super memorization based, like that's exactly, that's literally what Sketchy was made for in the first place. And that's, these are called, this is called the memory palace technique. But even for things like physics and chemistry that tend to be more subject focused uh, and like practice focused, the parts that you need to get absolutely in your brain, that's what we make the Sketchy about. Uh, and it's just a great platform to uh, move into all of that application from there. So yeah, but but Jess, what's the usual way of, of learning through this? And again, I, I want to reiterate, the reason why we're going through the whole like background of how Sketchy is put together is this is like, you can just plug into this one. 
This is our sketchy version of this. But whenever you're learning anything, this is exactly a way to structure your studying, uh, especially if you have any kind of an artistic bent uh, or even just in your imagination. You know, you can imagine every element as a different kind of character that's sort of a pun on the on the on the name of the element uh, and then, you know, draw them yourself and, and review them in this way, too. So it's something we like to empower people to do, uh, though we make a easy access one that we've made for everyone. Yeah, and so <clears throat> bear with me here too. Uh, this is the neuroscientist coming out in me. Um, so I'll, I'll throw in some some brain terms here as well. Um, but I think what's cool is like <laughs> we keep throwing around like the term lesson. So at Sketchy, what we mean uh, by a particular lesson is usually we we like to have you start uh, with the video. So we narrate uh, basically drawing on each symbol uh, one by one. Um, and I think our average video length is around eight and a half minutes. Um, this particular lesson's a little longer because as we mentioned over 20 different symbols, um, like we said, you watch the narrated video and this is really just to help you familiarize yourself with the content and how we've symbolized um, you know, a particular fact uh, because some of them may not you know, come to mind to you. So we just wanna make sure everything's clear. Um, so this is definitely part of your memory and coding phase. Uh, and this is really critical uh, as kind of step one for using um, Sketchy and, and sort of the technique. I also say as you are seeing this full Candy Castle sketch, uh, I welcome anybody who wants to guess what each of these symbols is. Sometimes there's like this guessing game the first time you see a sketch before you've seen us walk through it. As soon as you have, you know, the voiceover as, as you see the sketch, you'll you remember it forever. Um, but we are more than happy to to tell you whether you are right or wrong, if you want to guess what any one of these symbols are, we will be featuring some more of them later too. And I also have to say, if you want to guess, um, say whether or not sort of this is true, truth or not, um, has anybody at Sketchy dressed up as any of these characters in the sketch? <laughs> um, so I'd like to hear if you think that somebody was brave enough to do that. Um, <laughs> And I'll, I'll reveal the answer, uh, I guess, before we get too far along. I can't comment on that because if I if I suggest that it happened, then uh, you know I'm giving away a game. <clears throat> or at least we should have invited that particular person. Oh, know? we should have. It's true. Oh. <sighs> so cats out of the bag. So yes, um, <laughs> one of our half dressed jesters um, was one of our creative team members this year. So yeah, we have, she won we have the contest. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> For sketchy ween. <laughs> right. So, all right. So after you watch the video, uh, the cool thing is on our platform, we also have a way for you to quickly rehearse uh, through all the symbols. Um, so we call this our symbol explorer. Uh, and you literally can just sort of click through. You can also turn it off and, and sort of just move yourself around, try to guess all the symbols. Um, but this is a really great way to consolidate uh, the memories. So definitely another phase of rehearsal. So this would be similar to sort of you're used to making flashcards. Um, this is just a different approach to rehearse through the content. So definitely after you've watched the video, you know, maybe you've also had a lecture on it in class, um, just anytime you sort of come back to it, um, just a, a really great way to, to make sure you actually learn the content in the first place. One fascinating thing that we found by looking at sketchy users, uh, and I, I think you all probably know, uh, medical students are pretty hard workers, they find their ways to study, is that we have more visits to review card pages than to video pages in sketchy, like on the sketchy website. That is, people come back to rehearse but they come back on average more than once, uh, which is true about sketchy, but it's also true about studying in general, is that your quick return and rehearsal to a subject should be quick enough, but also should happen often enough that you end up reviewing material more times than you ever took to learn in the first place to kind of reactivate those. I'm sure you all have seen that spaced repetition graph in the past, uh, if anyone's ever used Anki cards or that sort of method. And But yeah, I think what we've got next is uh, 
Oh yeah, this and this is our review card. I think this is a bit of a, just a zoom in on that. Um, yeah, zoom in, and I guess an opportunity if anybody wants to call out their favorite <laughs> symbol here, or just call out a favorite number if you want us. If you're really curious, you can't figure something out. I think uh, you know. <laughs> symbol number one, carb H two O. I know Brian mentioned earlier polysax, so I think you'll see here we we did sort of call out some some sacks here. So if yeah, if you're wondering why there are random sacks on the walls, well, maybe that sort of answers your question. <laughs> you know, yeah. saccharides, monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides. We got you covered. And one thing we do is. We use areas of the image to compartmentalize information. So it's not just that we have one sack on the wall and then two sacks and then a mm -hmm. bunch of sacks together because there are mono, di, and polysaccharides. It's all of the other symbols in that area are all of the monosaccharides and then the ones underneath the two sacks are the disaccharides and then we've got the polysaccharides over there and that compartmentalizing of these symbols is actually a lot of how this memory palace technique works because you can imagine yourself navigating the image that you've got stored in your brain and remembering that things that are juxtaposed in the image are juxtaposed in reality as well but we also have a review game don't we we do. So the last phase, um, so this is your memory retrieval phase. So how can you apply uh, what you just learned? Um, so whether this is, you know, our quiz platform, so we have uh, basically quiz content to cover our lessons uh, or your own practice exams and, and test prep. So um, I think this is a really critical phase. Um, and again, combined with the review card, you know, the simple explorer, um, you can just kind of return and, and keep practicing. And limber up your fingers because there are going to be a couple questions. We'd love to hear what you think the answers are. Yeah, so we <clears throat> can't throw up the quiz without giving you a few questions. Um, definitely, if, if you know the answer, throw it up in the chat. This is also yeah. the easier of the two that we're going to be showing. Just Yeah, just wait. It's a bit of a warm-up. The, the <laughs> second one is... Uh, <laughs> Yes, those of you who are sharing in public chat, uh, now you are correct. But Jess, how do we, if you've learned something like this through Sketchy, you know, what's the cognitive process of getting to that kind of an answer? Yeah, so I think, you know, again, we kind of mentioned earlier, like what comes to mind. So if you, you know, watched the lesson, you did the review card. So when you see this kind of question, you're going to start popping up these symbols, you know, because everything is so specific, it's so memorable. Um, and the coolest thing too, we didn't really mention this um, explicitly, is these symbols also show up across our courses. So you're going to see this in all of biochemistry, sort of relatable symbols, you know, in this case, cotton candy. Um, you know, we think of like cotton candy as being very stringy. Um, you know, it was also under the, the polysacks. Um, you know, this glucose. So it's just definitely something that's going to come to mind. And it's something we uh, use as a reoccurring symbol a lot. And the cotton candy is very carefully chosen as the symbol that we have, because not only is it, well, it's sugar, cotton candy, and everything in the biochem is sort of theme park themed. So, you know, that's cotton candy. Mm -hmm. But cotton candy itself you know, it kind of branches out and it's got all these stringy things that come together. And so it's got this very glycogen vibe to it. And now, well, every time you get cotton candy at the fair, you're never going to be able to get MCAT out of your head. And that would be a good or a bad thing, depending on who you are, I guess. <laughs> uh, but I think a lot, a lot of you might've gotten that one right, uh, even uh, without, um, and uh, but and because you just uh, you know you, you remember that fact as glycogen, but that question could have been different. It could have been more challenging. It could have been about alpha and beta bonds very easily, which gets back to that arbitrary. Well, which one starts in cellulose, alpha versus beta? Uh, but we had that symbol earlier of the alpha noodles and the uh, beta celery. 
uh, I think we can give a bit of a moment of silence <laughs> for sure for whoever had to write this question, but also for whoever has to read <laughs> to read this question. <laughs> But this is another one that we have, and uh, at least back when I was being trained as the online teacher back in the day, I was told to give some time to read questions. So I'll actually give, you know, how long does this one take? 20 or 30 seconds. Love to see your Thanks answers 30. in the chat. I guess if you're on the East Coast, maybe this is like bedtime reading. <laughs> what do you mean? This is bedtime reading for me every day. <laughs> I always read long I'm kind of question stems to relax myself. I think you would. Before yeah. bed. <laughs> All right. Should we should we give a hint? Maybe we can move. Yeah. So yeah. So this Since one. Back. I got, I can't click twice, right? There we go. If I click once. Yeah. So I did call out the parts of the sketch that had the one sack versus the two sacks. And this is explained if you watch the whole video or if you walk through the whole thing, but this is where sketchy really starts to prove itself uh, for, you know, what we hear from our students. It's when it's not just a matter of factual yes or no, or what does something vaguely look like, but in the Candy Castle sketch, we have three different symbols that have only one bin, hexagonal shaped bin. Those are the monosaccharides. And that's glow candy, which is glucose, galactic marshmallows, which is galactose, and duck man taffy, which is mannose. Mm -hmm. Why did we make it duck man, by the way? Just because... It's a little watch, weird to call it just man taffy. Mm -hmm. watch, watch the lesson. <laughs> There's another couple of really cool clues, hence to, to help you remember manos. Yeah. Uh, and then the disaccharides are the ones underneath the two sacks. And these three containers, malt balls, moo chews, suck sucks. Malt balls is maltose. Moo chews is lactose. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's cows. <laughs> and suck suck is uh, sucrose. And so if you're able to boil down this question and the boiling down of the question is its own skill and you got to make sure you see realistic MCAT practice as you are getting ready for the MCAT. Uh, this is something I would recommend to everyone. And we'll talk about how, how to work that into a larger schedule in a moment. But if you can boil down this question, this question is eventually getting to which of the following molecules is the heaviest? Because we are told that lower mass gets larger deflection. And then we're asked which of these has the smallest deflection and therefore the highest mass. <clears throat> so, uh, and I appreciate those of you who guessed uh, on this, uh, who sent messages. Uh, and as you all know, or as many of you know, um, you should always guess on the MCAT. Don't leave anything blank. There's no penalty for guessing. And don't get me started on people saying there's a penalty for guessing on some exams like the SAT, there isn't, not really, don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> but there definitely isn't a penalty uh, on the MCAT, so you should be guessing. And uh, yeah, and uh, Brianne's got it. Brianne's on so fire. That's the, that's the key here, is that if when you answer questions like the last one, kind of close your eyes and you're like, oh yeah, uh, I remember now there's the cotton candy and that's glycogen. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's really efficient. Uh, and that's also animals, you know, cellulose always has plant symbols and chitin. Well, you don't have any symbols for chitin because we don't really talk about non-animal. I guess we don't really talk about like, you know, exoskeletons very much. Uh, <laughs> um, Whereas the starch, you know, is, is a little bit different. But if what you do for this one is you remember exactly this, this is the image in your mind, then you're like, oh yeah, fructose. Uh, so it actually isn't 
in the excerpts here, but fructose is in the little mini fridge, a uh, bunch of fruit, which is also underneath the uh, single single saccharides. Uh, galactose is a galactic marshmallows. Lactose, that's the moochus. And then mannose, that's a duck man. Uh, so there we go. Moochus is the only disaccharide. It's the heaviest one. And it's the right answer there. <clears throat> And this is how we get from arbitrary words linked together into being able to use those visual parts of your brain. Yeah, and you probably have, you know, you've seen the word, the method of loci a few slides ago as well. Um, and so when you think about watching, you know, going through this, the loci is just the location. So like you literally visualize yourself walking through, you know, the candy castle too, as, as you're reading some of these these questions so it's amazing you know it's like taking a trip to the grocery store you know where everything is so it's definitely the same concept of uh, encoding these symbols into your brain so. and yes people have suggested we make 3d virtual reality models of our sketchy sketches so people so you can actually walk through them and what i will say is if you want that by the time you're in med school then get sketchy mcat and tell all your friends so that you know, everyone's using sketchy and then we can make VR stuff. Cause believe me, we want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can have a real 3D, uh, 3D model. Uh, so. Yeah. And I guess before yeah. we move on, I just want to mention um, this lesson is part of our free trial. So just want to plug, you know, feel free to go onto our site. And I think Brenna uh, will drop in the link in the chat as well. Um, check out the lesson. So you can watch the whole lesson. Uh, and get actually the whole thing. So get the other symbols that we didn't necessarily talk about and uh, yeah, see what you Yeah, think. yeah, that's exactly why we picked this one because you can check out the rest. You can just mm -hmm. do it. And uh, I think our total, actually we, what, our free trial is is a few days, but it's mm -hmm. like half of the course. There's a, there's a lot of the course you could look at for the you free trial. 50 lessons yeah. uh, for three days. So you so. get a real good sample, basically whatever, you know, interests you the most. And, um, you know, the, I, 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 we don't have the exact number. We're not making a big deal of it, but like, you know, we, we got 300 of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we weren't able to talk this much about like 30% of one sketch. There's just so mm -hmm. much original stuff. So many really great memories across everything you really need to know for the MCAT. Uh, we actually have done, we're in the middle of an analysis right now to make sure that we get literally everything that the AAMC says is on the MCAT. There are a few tiny low yield things, but we're even filling those in now. <laughs> um, and so uh, we really are trying to make it so you don't need to learn all of this out of a textbook in order to review for the MCAT, uh, that you can do it through videos and the sketchy method instead. Uh, so yeah, uh, we've, and you, y'all probably know, you know, we, we've got a free trial, which we'd love for you to sign up for. We'd love for you to sign up for sketchy in general. You know, we, we, we put this in and we think it'll help you. And we also have, uh, 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 like a code for you at the end, if you want a discount, don't worry. So just stick around for that. But, uh, let's talk about study scheduling before we do, because I think this is really important. If you are here watching this right now, you are probably in the process of making an MCAT study schedule because you're going to be taking the test in. Actually, I'd love to hear it uh, if you can put it in the mm -hmm. chat. When do you plan to take your MCAT? What month? Because uh, it's probably going to show that we've got people making schedules a certain amount out. Mm -hmm. So if you put it in the chat when you're making your MCAT schedule, I'd love to see it. But yeah, Jess, what are some principles we should use? Yeah, so we say, you know, where where do you begin? <laughs> so... The classic answer is at the beginning, but what is the beginning in this case? Um, so we always like to say, you know, get your baseline. Um, so the very first step, you know, take take the exam, take the practice test, review it, see where you are. Um, you know, you never know what you don't know until you don't know it. So uh, it's definitely something you can use to structure your schedule around, you know, and and just really honing in on what topics you should focus on. Um, so I think the big question there is, you know, the question to answer is what topics are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? So if something's your strength, you know, Hey, you don't really need to pay as much attention to because you're really strong in that area, uh, and just really hone in on the weakness. Um, and just, you know, what are your just general thoughts about the exam too? You know, are you, 
like this cute little dog has no idea what they're doing um you know also like the cat um <laughs> we're, we're all at different uh places you know when we we think about the mcat exam uh so just getting real kind of where you are um so the, the cat is someone who has all of the content down, but then when they start actually <laughs> applying it on the test, they end up with the loading screen. Uh, a lot of people ask whether you need to take this practice test or diagnostic exam before you even start your prep, like before you get any resources or whatever. And my answer to that is like, you can. There are a lot of free practice tests available. The AAMC recently, finally, actually has a free practice test itself. Um, and there are a lot of other ones that you can do. So that's a way to kick things off. But any prep program that you're going to sign up for that you're going to put together yourself also just needs to include full length exams. And so you can just make your schedule and say, week one, I'm going to start off with my first full length exam while you have your books and you have your sketchy and you have your cue banks and all that. Uh, and one thing that's key here is that that's not the only time you do that. You should take that temperature more often as you get closer to your test date. Like you want to take one test at the very start. And then assuming you have like maybe, I mean, I'm seeing what we've got here. Got a couple people with more of a six-ish month schedule. We got an April and June. We got others with uh, September. So yeah, um, uh, those of you who said September, welcome and congratulations for like getting ahead of the game. I'm really really happy that there are people who are looking that far ahead for their MCAT. You're, I think you're, you're, you're going to be the envy of all of your friends who are going to be all prepping for the MCAT at the last minute. So I'm glad you're starting now. But if you're working out like a six month, let's say you want to take one test right at the start, then you want to take another test like a couple months in. And then you want to take another test another couple months in, but then you're going to want to take a test every other week or every week up to test day. And those aren't just for you to see where your score is, to see if you're scoring where you want to, though that is part of what they're for. It's also for you to look at the micro results of each test and decide where you're going to focus your study over the next week or over the next month based on those results. In general, you want one schedule that's going to get you through like all of your content. But as you get closer to the end of getting through all the content, you need to start peppering in just whole days where you say, I am going to study all of the content specifically from the chem phys passages that I didn't do well on my last exam. <laughs> and so I'm going to study fluids and then I'm going to study gases and then I am going to study motion or whatever, you know, those three passages were. And you can go either go back to the same resources to review that you saw the first time, or you can do QBank questions or um, whatever, whatever else it takes. So continue to adjust those as well. Uh, we've got another set of tips here, Jess. Uh, yeah, how, I think, how would you frame uh, these? You know, this one kind of fits into the content review. So just really knowing, knowing your style, you know, knowing what resources are going to fit uh, into your prep. Um, and, you know, a lot of it's what strategies really work for you. So do they work for you in your courses? Um, if they work for you there, you know, they're probably going to work for you here. Um, and I think Adam um, will definitely have some more webinars on, on resources, but I feel like you're like the resource expert, you know, what other resources are out there, mm -hmm. you know, that students can. Uh, yeah. Can so what you're going to want is no matter who you are and what your learning preferences are, you're going to want a variety to draw from. You're going to want uh, a bank of a lot of questions. You're going to want a bank of a lot of questions, uh, a practice test, and you're going to want really high quality content review that matches your approach, potentially multiple ones. There are a lot of students who use like, review books that they got from Amazon and they also use sketchy and they kind of side by side those things or they use one they read through all the books and then they use sketchy as the second time through or they use sketchy in companion with whatever QBank or the AMC resources that they've bought um and uh, we're even you know let's just say watch this space we don't have it done quite yet but like we are um we're looking through the AMC resources to give you a recommendation on what sketchy should you look at depending on how well you did on a given AMC passage. Uh, 
And so it's about having all those resources available. And But one thing that we found is that you know, you might identify as a visual or auditory or a kinesthetic learner or what have you, but where those learning styles really apply is based on content. And the MCAT, and, and the meaning it's not like as a, it's not like every person, it's like one person is like, oh, I learn everything visually. Another person says, I learn everything audio, et cetera. It's that there's certain content that everyone can benefit from visual versions of. There's certain content everyone can benefit from different types of versions. Uh, and when we're talking about learning science facts for the MCAT, the more visual, the better. <laughs> uh, because otherwise it's just arbitrary facts and words, which your brains just aren't designed to remember in the same way that your brains are designed to remember characters and art and images. Uh, and that's what we'll really get into. Uh, but you really should poke around, try everything. Um, and uh, start off early enough that you can learn your preferences and then focus on them. Yeah, that's awesome. We've got two two slides, two SpongeBob uh, memes here. Yeah. We're, we're two for two in a row here. <laughs> All right. So, and our third tip, um, and I think you know this one's really really key. Um, just being realistic with your time. Um, so you know. We said some of you have a lot of time, uh, so that's great because you maybe can be more flexible um, because all of us have different schedules. Maybe you work, you have family obligations, you know, different things get in the way at different times that you can't really necessarily plan for. So I think just allocating, you know, as much time as you can um, and then really key is, is the rest. So I'm a big sleep person, um, you know, don't, don't take that out of your schedule. Um, so definitely build in you know, time to rest up. Um, and then also I'm a huge habit person. So the more you can build around your routine, uh, the more likely you're going to stick to it. So, um, you know, no excuses, build the routine. It's like a vitamin. It's awesome. Um, I'm really curious too, if, if anyone has started their planning schedule, if, if you sort of like electronic, sort of like keeping it on a calendar, if you block time out, if you like sort of having a printed calendar, just really curious to see if anybody- now, has What any calendars tools. do you use? This is one where like, I feel like a lot of people are afraid to try the physical hard copy calendar thing. Mm -hmm. Not that digital calendar is anything wrong with it. It's what I use. But like, I think especially, and I, I felt this way too, when I was in my, my, mm -hmm. my pre-medical age days of like, what, if I have to buy a, you know, buy a calendar. Oh, I don't, I don't have money for anything. I can't buy a calendar. Try buying a calendar. It's not that much. Like give, give it a shot, borrow it from a friend, you know, ask if, ask, ask for a Christmas present. If you could just get me a calendar, mom and dad, well, really, I mean, you want to go to your parents and say, Hey, can you give me sketchy MCAT mom and dad? But like uh, a calendar as well. Maybe that's what we should include as a, as a Christmas bonus. I mean, <laughs> sketchy I, calendar. <laughs> okay, I think we have some potential users. Um, you know, I'm the same way. I like to cross things off, you know, that sense of accomplishment, you know, check the box. Um, and then I like to doodle. So like, if you're going to stare at sort of what you should be doing, you know, kind of in the sketchy theme, you know, kind of sketching other things out, um, just kind of really, really freeing and, and sort of, I guess it's probably one of my de-stressing uh, mechanisms. So, you know, what else do you do to to let go of the stress when you're studying so that you can have some fun uh, and enjoy what you're doing? And I think, you know, it's one thing we'll say about Sketchy is we promise you're going to have fun. So. Yeah, in fact, uh, that is what we hear most commonly from people who use Sketchy. They say, well, you know, I used it because everyone you know, said I should, because, you know, it's, it's just like a best practice is great resource, but I really didn't realize how much fun it was. <laughs> and that really kept me motivated and kept me going. I also got a respect on the calendar thing. Marla is on another level using Excel for calendars. I think it's, that is awesome. <laughs> that is, that is really something. Uh, it's good stuff. And just to, on a thing of habits, it, it ties in with the next one too. Uh, uh, you mentioned it, Jess, but this is also true. Um, you really just want to get form habits and kind of get organized and documented about things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'll give a couple just concrete examples for me. Last time I had to prepare for a big test, 
for me, it was just, it was every Saturday. That was every Saturday I spent as long as it took to get through that chunk of lessons. It was the one I was preparing for was like 10 different chunks. It was a lot shorter than the MCAT, uh, this particular one, because I was able to study only on Saturdays and get the thing done in like six months. Um, but, uh, and that's what it was. It was no matter what happened. It was like, I would get enough early, get up early enough on Saturday. And I always knew I had to do it. Um, or back when I was indeed studying for the MCAT, um, I was on the subway all the time because I lived in New York. And so I had my books. Nowadays, I guess I would have my phone and I would be watching, I'd be watching my sketchy, but I had my books and I must've been just so weird because I literally every single subway ride for months and months, which was a lot of hours, that was just me. And I was just drawing everywhere, writing everything in my books and getting through all that using all the time. If you can make a habit where it's like every time this happens and it happens regularly, I'll be studying. It just lifts the pressure of when am I going to study off your shoulders? And that can almost be larger than the pressure of actually learning in the first place. But yeah, just uh, as uh, this is our last slide of tips here before we get into Q&A and then to close mm -hmm. up here, this is just an hour long. Tip typically, at least one person asks, how long is this going to be? So we talk about how long it is. And I don't think I actually mentioned it. No one asked this time. So yeah, uh, we'll be wrapping up soon. But Jess, what's our, our last set of tips here? Yeah, so I think like you said, you know, just carrying over from the last one uh, is just staying staying organized and keeping track of, of what you're doing. So I think I jumped ahead a little bit because I already asked about, you know, what tools you're using. And, um, you know, I think it's it's really important to, you know, as we already mentioned, like checking the box and, and making sure you are making progress. Um, so I also want to give a nod to uh, the... <laughs> 1999 era Morpheus, I, which now you now you have to specify because of course the fourth Matrix movie there's a different guy playing Morpheus, so we're talking the Lawrence Fishburne version of Morpheus, saying that the MCAT does not test intelligence; it tests how much time you're willing to sacrifice in order to become a doctor, which is funny. Like I appreciate the humor of the meme, but to even look into that, it really does test hard work and study time more than innate ability. Uh, because even if you are extremely smart and if you are a pre-med, you are probably quite smart. If you are here in this chat, I have a sense. You are a very intelligent person already. The, you can't not put in the work. And that is indeed part of what's being tested because there's gonna be a lot of work in med school and in residency and as a physician as well. And so a lot of it is, can you point yourself toward an academic and professional objective? And it's a lot of steps to get there, but as long as you keep on taking steps, you are gonna get there. And that's what's being tested more than anything else, especially if you are following best practices and getting your study schedule well done and getting having a support system, all that jazz. And yeah, I, I also agree with Cynthia in the chat. The first time I saw, I, I laughed out loud at that Harry Potter <laughs> as well. Um, I don't know what it is. It's like, sometimes the sometimes they capture just the perfect frame of film for the meme. That, that, that look on his face is just so, so real. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, we'd like to move into our last little bits of this session. Uh, in general, I do want to say thank you. Stick around for a few more minutes, please, because uh, we do want to show you, uh, you know, we, we, we got a little discount code and, and stuff we can share with you and a few other tips. But especially at this point, if you want to put any questions for us that you have in the chat about just literally anything about Sketchy, about the MCAT, about just whatever, go ahead and ask. We'll stick around to, to answer them even a little bit past, you know, the end of the session if you want to.